Hello and welcome to this video. I'm hoping that I'm going to show you a very simple way to create clouds. I'll be using quite a big brush for this because this is a, a two inch general painting brush. Very cheap, uh, nothing special at all. I also have um, a dish here which I've got linseed oil in. Got some Payne's grey, some cerulean blue, and titanium white. And with this, I'll create some clouds. I'm hoping maybe we'll put, we'll have some time to put a bit of a landscape at the bottom just to reflect the whole scene. But the main point here is about clouds. So I'm going to work quite watery here. This is all oils, by the way, obviously, linseed oil and oil paint. Um, always remember that clouds, well, skies, are darker at the top, lighter at the bottom, because the, the, the closest the sky is, is above you. So you see more of the colour. As it goes away from you, then the colours dissipate somewhat. So I'm going to take some of this blue such of the white just to start off make sure there's plenty of oil on there we don't want too much oil so that it's dripping everywhere but we do want it quite flexible so I'll start off we'll just throw some paint on let's see what we get right, so that's a, quite a dark color now but remember remember dark at the top so I'm just putting like a base layer on for a minute it's just getting some shapes on. Now, one thing that I do like, I like the corners as well as the top to be darker in tone. The reason for this is it kind of frames the whole image. And what happens is the viewer's eye will go to the center because it's lighter there. And I've just put a touch of the, the dark gray on. It's Payne's gray. I'm just going to Pop some of that in the corner. Pop some of that in the corner. I've, I think I've kind of got in mind what I'm going to do, but not completely. <laughs> so, making it up as I go along. And that's what art is. Make it up as you go along. You can't make mistakes. Some more paint grey. Okay. And this will change completely as we go along. What I'm doing at the minute is just trying to create some kind of overall kind of feeling for the painting and then we'll go into detail. As you can see it's quite quite runny. So work this in just a little bit here so the colours kind of blend together a little bit. It's very powerful blue in the middle. Remember we're going to be putting clouds on top this and if you want your clouds to be dramatic which is always good <laughs> you need the dark to bring out the light you need the dynamics so just work that in now i'm not going to clean the brush i'm just going to take some white into my brush i'm just going to rub that in there now this as you can see it's a bit thick here so also Put some more oil on my brush. Work that in. Work that in. And because we're concentrating on skies in this video, I'm going to go quite low down. The landscape at the bottom is going to be quite minimal. And usually, it's good to work in the rule of thirds, which means you cut your painting up into thirds. So this way you put the land you put the landscape here you've got a little bit of sky and a lot of landscape which gives you kind of a high perspective if you put the landscape lower then that gives you a lower perspective as if you your point of view is down on the ground looking up into the big sky the rule of thirds is good but sometimes we can do it. well they're not it is a rule, but it's not a rule. <laughs> this is art. It's not a science. It's not a science. It's 
So let's just get a feeling first for what we want. Let's just get some shapes on there. I'm not really thinking about clouds at the minute. I'm thinking sky, sky, sky. But also I'm thinking shapes. Just shapes. We put something base down like that. And then let's just see what happens. I'm going to smooth this in here because there's too much white here for me. Just in blocks and shapes. When we think about shapes, I'll be thinking more about shapes when we come to the actual clouds themselves. So I want something that's more just a, a background base layer, something to work on. I think that's quite dramatic. It's quite dramatic. I use these X shapes quite a lot, then left, right. Let's just get some paint on that. By the way, this isn't a canvas, this is a board I'm working on. This is, I think it's four, four or five millimeters thick. I usually paint bigger than this, but I'll just do a quick painting just to show you how to do clouds. clouds. This, this one, I think this is 30 centimeters by 40 centimeters, so it is quite small. So I'm going to bring this all the way down here. All the way down, not quite to the bottom, because we'll have a bit of landscape there. It's good to have the landscape in because it shows you the size of things. It shows you the size of things. So we can make this look a really big sky. It's good sometimes when you get streaks like that. What I like to do sometimes is use the edge of the brush. All the paint stored, all the different colours of paint that's not mixed. And that creates some interesting texture in the sky. Because we don't just want a dark at the top and light at the bottom. We want some variance. So I'm going to smooth a bit, that out a bit. I'm not worry too much about the brush strokes because we'll be applying some techniques soon that will smooth everything out. So there we go. We've got light at the bottom dark at the top. I think what I'll do as well, to make the clouds more dramatic, I'm going to add some more dark. So let's we'll take the pins grey, let's just go crazy. And look at it. Is that an interesting shape? It is to me. Stopping this down somewhat though, just by using the edge of the brush. Stopping this down, because we're just looking for the first layer at the moment something to work on. Let's get the paint in there. Maybe what I'll do as well, so we can drag the eye to the middle, definitely some more dark in here. Now, don't misunderstand me. We want the light in the centre, or just off centre, but for the light to be created, we need a dark colour underneath it. So I'll add some more. That's still crazy. It should be wild on your paintings. It should be Slightly sharper. Let's break something like that. Okay, so there we go. We've got some paint on the board. This is plywood, 30 centimeters by 40 centimeters. Now, this is a bigger brush. This is this one. This one is three inches. Okay, very clean, very soft. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to soften everything together. I'm just going to, I'm not going to paint with the brush head on like this what we're going to do is use this to soften soft just go very lightly over the top like this that's just we're removing those brush strokes just softening things that's all we're doing but we do this very gently don't put a lot of pressure on it's better to have more strokes rather than hard more soft strokes rather than hard strokes like this, it just softens it. It's just creating a background. And this is, obviously, like I said, it's not dripping wet. It's not running down the board. A lot of this is practice in knowing how thick or thin your paint is. You'll get that in a bit. There we go, very gently. So 
We're aiming for a light bit in the middle. And right now we've got a dark bit. But don't worry, don't worry. Like I say, dynamics. It's all about dynamics. Softening it down. Anywhere you see streaks. Turn around. Right, just like this. There's a streak that's been created. Now, you don't want to move the paint around. Not at this stage. You want to like, it just kind of soften. Soften what you get. Like, kind of like a, an airbrush effect. You can see I'm cleaning this. It's some kitchen paper now. And there's not that much coming off. But it's very important to keep this quite clean. What you're probably seeing there is just the brush being stained. There's not actually a lot of paint on that. Clean that off. Again. Very gently. Very, very gently. Just put this down. I mean, you don't have to be completely, let's get all, rid of all the marks and stuff like that, because we're going to be working on it further. This is just the first stage just to get some, just the paint on in some kind of atmosphere. There we go. So we've got some kind of atmosphere. I can see on the camera we've got a light bit in the middle, but that's just the lighting in here. It's terrible. Sorry about that. I'm trying to adjust that when I uh, edit the video. We'll see. But I'm hoping that you'll just get the, the gist of this of how I create clouds. Okay, so there we go. So we've got some background to work on. We've got some background to work on. Next. The brush that I originally used to do this, I'm going to wipe that off. Now you can see there'll be a lot more paint on here. All the oil that we've used. Let's just clean that up a bit. I'm not going to clean this completely. I'm just going to get the main paint off there. And the reason for that is it's it's called dirty painting. That's one of the, the terms for it. I'm going to get some more oil on here now. And then Pick up some of this white on both sides of the brush. And get quite a lot of it. And we're going to think, right, well, here's the dark bit. We want some lights in the middle. So I'm using the corner of the brush. Just the corner of the brush. And I'm thinking about interesting shapes now. Interesting shapes. And one thing to always remember, the clouds above you generally will be kind of bigger shapes like this are bigger because they're closer to you because they're right above you and down here at the horizon let's get some more lines on there down here at the horizon probably be smaller and this creates the illusion of depth well but you can see where the dark is here and we've got the light on that's the more dramatic part. Another good tip is when you look at clouds, they're not always just contained within the view. Okay, whenever you look up at the sky, if 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 you look at it, the the clouds will go out of you your view. So, for instance, this cloud here it looks quite nice, I think, as a start, but the trouble is it's kind of pushed inside the picture. So, if we just drag this out. So some of the cloud goes away like this. It looks realer, more dominating, more like nature. And what we've got here, I've not really thought about what I've done. I've just made shapes, interesting shapes. That's a start. Okay, so what we'll do next. We'll go back to our big brush, softening brush, and again, very, 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 very lightly, what we'll do is just soften this down. One tip on this, if you if you use the brush in a certain direction, it will send the clouds in a certain direction. So imagine here, I want the clouds to sort of come round. What we can do is softly move the brush in a circular kind of moment, no movement, and it'll give us that kind of like the wind is blowing the clouds. And the same here. 
drag these out, drag these out, but don't spoil all those beautiful little shapes that you just made. Don't spoil them. Don't spoil them. All you're doing is softening them. And if you get the paint to the right consistency, what will happen is the paint will flow. It will just flow into each other. And also, once we finish this painting, even overnight, what will happen is that paint will adjust itself. All the molecules will bounce together and collide together and merge together. So the painting that you finish in the day, you look at it the next day, it'll be different. And even if you leave it over more and more time, it'll kind of coagulate. A good tip that I like to I like to do is leave the painting flat. It gives the paint a chance to just form itself. Imagine like puddles, little puddles of oil. And if you leave them over then overnight, they're going to kind of merge together a little bit. So all these edges, they're all going to soften together. Okay, now we've got quite a bit of paint on. I'll get some more kitchen roll, some clean kitchen roll. And like that painter. Hopefully, what you can see, there's a horrible dot in the middle you can see on the camera. I don't know how to get rid of that. I need to get better lighting, I suppose. But I'm hoping that you can see generally the effect. So that's how quick you can create clouds. Imagine you've got a landscape in front of that. Well, you'll see in a minute when I do the landscape drastically changes the picture. It adds another dynamic to it. I think these clouds need to pop off the top here. And there we go. Hopefully you can see where we have the darkness. That's where it's most interesting. And we, we're we trying to keep the viewer, his or her eye, concentrated in the centre of the painting. So straight away, very quickly, we built up the beginnings of the sky. And obviously there's lots and lots of different types of skies. This is just one I'm doing. Maybe I'll do some more videos of different types of skies. I do like drama in skies. This to me is starting to look quite dramatic. One of the main tools that we use here is the softening. It's very important. You can't just throw anything on there and soften it and it looks like a sky. You need to think about the shapes and the dynamics of things. There we go. That's kind of level two. Now, level three, I'm just going to get some more titanium white. Put that on my palette because I used it all up. I want to think about even more drama now. So, what I will do, if I can find it, palette knife, really cheap palette knife. Just a bit of plastic, really. On this palette knife, I will be putting some titanium white. Now, last time we put the white on, it was mixed a little bit with the colours on the brush. This time, it's pure white. So, let's think about these shapes. What have we got already? Let's make these more dramatic. So, let's put this white. Obviously, because I'm putting it on with a knife, it's it is also sliding on top of the uh, paint that we've already got, which is fine. Sometimes, just get rid of it. So doing, I think, kind of these erratic shapes is good, because that's how nature is. Nature's so beautiful, but it's not organised into straight lines. It's a bit crazy, a bit crazy. So let's just add some points of interest. I'm trying to keep it more towards the centre, not very much right in the middle, but just central. I'm looking at the shapes we've already got, like this shape here, we just kind of like that some. Remember, be quite erratic, depending on what kind of scale you want. If you wanted a peaceful sky with little fluffy clouds, like cotton, cotton buds, <laughs> cotton wool buds, then obviously what you need to do is get that feeling in your mind and 
explore that feeling and try and put it down on the canvas of the board. I'm going to clean the knife off because when you're putting the paint on, because it's so wet underneath, you're going to pick up some of those other colours. So try and get more pure white. Let's get some impact here. Let's get some. Remember, smaller clouds at the bottom, bigger ones at the top. So let's go crazy at the top. Lots of this paint and that's all I do. It's really some paint and this now we took this cloud off the edge it kind of points into the painting if you're like me and you're creative you start to see things in the clouds remember when you were a child and you used to look up at the clouds and say oh there's an elephant and, oh there's a dog oh, I see a, a man here falling on his back there's his head his body and his two arms but maybe you don't see <laughs> it's, I think that's a good way to, to be creative and develop that creative muscle. Try and look at things and just see what you can see in them, like you did when you was a child. Sometimes I look at wooden floors with all the, the shapes in the floors and I can see things in them. And that, trying to look for these things will make you more creative. It will develop the creative muscle. There we go. So that might look like a mess to a lot of people, but basically I'm looking at shapes. It might be leading out of the painting somewhat at the moment, but when we put the landscape in at the bottom, and it will be a very simple landscape because I'm just thinking about clouds. This is the, the main reason for this video. Let's have some straggly shapes here. Just using the knife to pull across. Just like this. Yeah, it's kind of wispy, wispy clouds that you can see. You see here? Just these very thin, very thin clouds. That's nice looking quite dramatic, I think. So, again, we go back to the, the blending brush, the big brush. In this case, it's a three inch brush. When I do bigger paintings, I use, uh, what are they called? They're wallpaper. Um, pasting brushes, they're very good, so, okay. now this time, I'm going to go more left to right, kind of like the shapes that we've got, and obviously because we've put the paint on with the palette knife there, it's, it's going to be a bit tougher to drag around, and don't, don't make the mistake of pushing harder because it's tougher to move around, be very light, be even lighter. Like these lovely lines here, really light. Because if you're too strong with it, you'll disappear. You've wasted your time in making that so lovely shape. Let's just soften all that out. This is quite difficult because I'm trying to look in the camera at the same time and see what we've got. So obviously, we've got a thundercloud coming in there and it's it doesn't thunder, it's like it's going to rain. Seconds, especially at the corners and the edges, like I say, it's almost like a frame where you have it darker around the edges. So even more at the edges, I usually like to soften more at the edges than in the centre. And that will make more dynamics in the centre. Sometimes I'll leave the bottom not so softened, and sometimes I soften it more. It depends on the kind of effect that you're looking for. Now, this bit here, I'm not going to soften this too much. If you can see here, I really do like these shapes here. I'll perhaps just give it a one small stroke like that. Isn't that interesting? I wish there wasn't this blue spot right on the, the middle. I think that's let me just turn this camera. There we go. That's better. So you, now you can see more of what I'm seeing. Now we do have some strokes coming upwards here, so I'm just going to pull those down. Just going to pull those down. If, the, if those strokes were going downwards, it wouldn't be so bad. It'd look like far off rain. I don't like. Let's go there, so. 
sometimes just just the corner of the brush, just using the corner of the brush, and get things down. But what we want is different things everywhere, different things. The brain is the thing that sees art. It's not your eyes. Your eyes just collect light. It's your, it's your brain that actually works out what it's seeing. And your brain loves to have dynamics and different things everywhere. I've seen people paint a lovely cloud, and then what they'll do, they'll go, oh, I'm impressed with that cloud. So they'll, they'll do another one, exactly the same. And that detracts from everything. You want different. You want your brain to be... Uh, well, not your brain, it's the viewer's brain, isn't it? Your brain. If, if, if it works with your brain, it's probably going to work with the viewer's brain. In this case, let me think. Step back and look at that. Yeah, that's quite attractive. We do this bit in the middle there, and maybe these two adjust it so that. There is quite, that is quite thick paint there, so we can move that around. And I always remember, it's not just about putting paint on and taking it off. It's a, for me, mainly when I'm painting, it's moving the paint around. Moving the paint around. Spend quite a lot of time moving paint around. And then also stepping back and looking at it. It's really good having a video camera on this because I can look in the view screen and that gives me a totally different view of things. That's a good thing to look at it in different ways. Because it gives you a different idea of how things are working. I quite like that. I could soften this bit up a bit here. Um, should I do that? Should I do that? See, it's all about decisions. Looking at your artwork, thinking, should I do that? Should I do that? I think maybe a bit more softening here in the centre. I'm quite happy with that. I could go on, but I'm trying to keep this video quite short. Don't want you to get bored. But there's a sky. There's a sky. I'll probably do some more videos on this because there's so many different types of sky. You can create. Okay, so we should we create some kind of a, a floor, something to go with the rest of it. I think so. We'll just do this quite quick. I'm going to get some sap green. Put some sap green onto my palette. Good old sap green. The darker the sap green that you can get, the better. And then I'll get some, I've got cadmium red hue. Put some of that on my palette. Now I'm going to use the same brush that I used. Oh, and by the way, more red than green, I think. Actually. Same brush that I used for the sky. Perhaps what I'll do is just Wipe it off a bit more. Let's get rid of some of that excess. And there we go. So we've got this red and this green. Pick up some of this oil. Pick up some of the red and the green. Wipe the brush over. Now it's too it's too red for me there. I want more green. A little bit more oil. Probably going to be too red, but I do not care. Start it and you can add the green later. So, our landscape we want a low one here, still working with a big brush. And let's just put on some shapes. And already, I hope you can see how that affects the sky. It starts to bring in some kind of it's like drawing a figure and then you put shadow on the floor, it will give you more of a concept of. Just some kind of a rise in there. Let's just put some shapes in again. Dark in the corners. Dark in the corners. That really helps bring out some depth. I don't always do this, but so I'm just putting in. I'm not just painting over everything. I don't want it with some. Just something there, some interesting shapes. Remember, it's the brain that looks for interesting things. Okay, so now I'm going to step back and I'm going to have a think about that. Yeah, we've got some kind of landscape there. Push the brush up a bit. 
it's not just a flat line everywhere it's just the edge of the brush just play something out maybe here as well and that's it's always good to have something that leads the eye into the painting i'm hoping that we're doing this already here but let's have just some kind of a some kind of a shape here but kind of if the eye goes to the bottom of the painting hopefully this shape will lead people in it's just got to try and hope <laughs> flat lines can be good. sometimes to me it's more interesting to have something pushing up into the painting and here this is leading down this is this is taking my arm out of the painting so let's bring this up just bring this up down back into the painting and the same on the side there it has to be a little bit i feel because this is pointing this way we need a lot more here this isn't doing enough to push the eye back in so in fact let's just let's just hit this let's just make something here just put some shapes out random shapes remember we need to be interesting to the brain so there we go interesting shapes there. interesting shapes there. So all that i'm thinking about right now is just shapes to direct the eye into the painting now I'm going to take some more green. And I'm not really thinking about colours at the minute. It's it's more I want more green because just to dif differentiate from the the ready dark brown texture that we've got there. This is almost tonalizing painting. Just thinking about tones. I'm not thinking about bushes or hills. I'm just thinking about shapes at the moment. Let's just get that in there. I'm not going to completely get rid of all these light patches. Because these light patches are giving us dynamics. Without the light, there's no dark. Without the dark, there's no green. So there's just something at the bottom. Okay, let me just think. Generally going left and right, not up and down. Occasionally, just short upstrokes, maybe some downstrokes. More than anything, try not to blend everything into each other completely. Leave the shapes there. Leave the shapes that you've created. Just work around them. Sometimes some upstrokes. very interesting colors there it's almost abstract it's too much red i did leave in there but i'm probably going to do a part two to this painting because we consider this the underpainting of the landscape then once it's dry we can do some grazing over the top. Now here, can you see we've got these strokes here? Hope the camera's picking that up. It doesn't really satisfy me. So just adding that eye up. Coming across the top here. Can you see how this is creating a distance? Let's add some more here actually. This alright. Some kind of distant land. 
it'd be really good if you can we don't want the landscape to just start and sky to just start it's good to have this disappearing part and uh, if you if you look out at a landscape certain parts of it you'll see the sky kinds of kind of like molds in to the landscape on other areas uh, which are stronger that are more in the foreground they'll st let me explain it like this so if we take this bit make this bit more strong because we've left a hard edge here let me get some more of this so what happens is the paint will build up on your brush well, let's keep cleaning the brush it's really handy this kitchen roll <laughs> really handy i don't use thinners or anything anymore i used to to clean my brushes but now when i'm cleaning my brushes out properly i just use detergent that you know you wash your materials with your clothes with wash it out with that and some warm water not hot water hot water will spoil your brushes so here we've got an an interesting shape almost looks like air's rock in australia doesn't it but here you see here we've got a hard edge at the top now you might want that that might be interesting but i think what i'm going to do is just sweep across that and let that kind of mold into the sky so very softly pat pat this down here so it just kind of sinks into the sky not a complete line that sinks into the sky just softly so there we can see we're getting the background so if you look at this side of the painting how we've softened everything and this side it's just the crazy shapes that we've made so i'm going to get some more oil into my brush Come in there, hope oh, my hand's not getting in the way too much. I'm at quite an awkward angle here, trying to um, get everything in view for me. You can see how that's softened down. Again, just like the sky, this is kind of the first layer. Just to have some paint on the board. And some interesting shapes and give us something to work on this is totally from imagination i have no idea what was it. well i did have an idea what i was going to do today and that was show you how to paint the sky but we needed a landscape at the bottom but just the the landscape up. the more loose you are in the paint the better it will turn out it's more of a painting than a, than a photograph then isn't it don't want to that's why we have cameras that's why we have cameras it's very important now to stop every now and then stand back and look at what you've got look at what you've got i think to me this bit is leading goes out with the painting it's almost like we've got a painting here and we've got another one at the side so I'll probably just going to drag some of this tone up here like this and drag some of this tone down so it's almost like keeping the viewer interested in the painting so if it was in a gallery they wouldn't go off and look at the next painting not so quick let's get some more shapes in there using the corner of the brush Grass here. Okay. Now one thing you do when if you clean off your brush like this, you drag across, what you should find will happen is it takes the paint off. So that'll give you the light bit. So I'm having the light near the centre here, dragging people in. Like that. Remember pushing the paint around more important than putting it on let's just get some left right kind of shapes in now if you work on it too much it will get muddy this is kind of looking like desert at the moment in arizona desert which is 
which is fine, which is fine. I think I'm going to leave it there because we have created a good sky up. Even once this is dried, we could come back and make the sky even more dynamic. We can add glazes to it. We could probably add a little bit of sunset there, maybe add some reds to it. But I'm going to let it dry for a few days. It might take a week or so of this because it's quite wet paint at the moment. But yeah, I think that's a good start. I hope you've learned something. Please hit subscribe to my channel if you want to see the next version of this. Don't forget to hit that little bell kind of icon at the side of subscribe. And what that'll do, that'll notify you that I'm the painting now. I do other things on my channel as well, so don't be surprised if you get notifications of me doing 3D animations and modeling and things like that. I do do not not just one kind of art, but various kinds of art, and I think that really helps as well. Doing 3D modeling and animation helps with fine art, fine art helps with the modeling. But there you go, quite quickly we've created something there. Please subscribe, leave some comments, leave some comments. Tell me if you think it's horrible, tell me if you think it's good, ask me questions, and it's great to have conversations. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Be well. Hopefully see you on the next one.